Hi everyone, thank you for joining uh, today's conference. I'm very excited uh, because after three years, I was talking to one of the person here that it's been three years that I am just doing online talks and attending the conferences and speaking there. But this is the first time after three years that I am speaking offline. So I'm also a little nervous, but excited to meet you all. And thank you for joining in today's talk, which is about how to effectively engage with our users. Because whatever technologies we are learning, whatever we are doing, the end goal is to achieve and make our users engage with us. So this talk is all about this. So I will first start with the customer life cycle and then the benefits of having a loyal customer. Plus, I want to introduce and let you know one of the framework that I have um, discovered. And this is what I'm using. That, that's kind of a mantra that I can share with you. And um, if you like it, do, do invest your time with that framework. And then the last 10 minutes, I'll open uh, the forum for any Q&A round, any questions, anything that you want to ask or um, you recommend, I think I'll open for that. So I hope people are settled. Yeah. Great. So the businesses that actually focus on building and retaining the user's loyalty are the ones that thrive in this era. And since we see so much uncertainty these days because of the economic conditions changing, we definitely need to thrive for our loyal customers. So this talk is all about that, that how we can gain new customers, how we can maintain and engage with them. So um, who doesn't need happy customer here? You all are working. I met some college uh, pass outs as well. I met some senior people here and someone who are just about to start their career. So I want to know from here that who doesn't need happy customers? And I'm sure there are some people who are already running their businesses. They all thrive for this, the end goal that they see day in and day out is happy customers. So who is a happy customer? It's someone that had a great experience on your product wishes to repeat that experience, right? So how can you actually make those customers happy? Customer happiness is the paramount factor that every company look for the success. And a happy customer can be a great asset for any organization, any business, any product because you are building for someone, you're not going to use it. You are actually building for someone else. And if you don't gain those customers, you're losing on your business. So you definitely need a happy customer. And a happy customer actually means happy business. According to Walt Disney, do what you do so well that they want to see it again and bring their friends. This is what they want to do, right? So if you want to sell something, what he meant is that if you do it so well, they will want to see it again. They will come back. They will enjoy the experience. And not only that, that they will come back, but also they will bring their new friends. They'll promote your business. They'll get you new users. So it is always about knowing what they are looking for, what is their goal? What is their pain point? How you can give value to your product? And then you see how they excel. Before jumping on the life cycle, I also want to resonate with we at Google believes in focus on the user and all else will follow. And that's what I want to say here as well that you know if you resonate well with your users, if you understand what they need and what they want, why they are here for, what is 
if you see, we always talk about what's in it for me, right? So every user thinks from that point of view, that what's in it for them. And if they don't get what they are looking for, they will move around. Life cycle of the users or the customers starts from identify customers, satisfy customers, and the third is retain customers. I'll dive deeper into each of these three segments and um, we'll try to cover all of them. The first starts with identify customers. Now, how you actually understand your customers? What is your target audience? Who are the users? Whom you are building for? So do a market fit analysis and then try to understand from the personas, right? I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard this term, but this is what our design language says, that you know, creating personas. But personas are nothing. They are the users or the segments that you are looking for. So personas are nothing but the users. And how do you actually create personas? It, it can be divided into multiple categories, like starting from the personality, how they behave, what they like, what they don't like, how are they, and are they extroverts, are they introverts, how are they feeling, what is their uh, characteristics, right? How they look like, what are their motivations, what are their goals, how tech savvy they are. So it can be categorized based on your product, based on your um, features that you want to show and then talk about and segregate those personas. Also talk about the frustrations they are facing. And it cannot only be around your product, but also about the domain that they are facing, the challenges they are facing, and how we can you know, overcome those through our services. So this is one example of how we can actually get into the personas. And you don't have to start from each persona. Try to segment them, right? And what does segmentation mean here? That you have a group of people who behaves in a similar fashion. That becomes your one segment. And then you segregate into the other segment. That's become your another persona. So identifying customers simply means this, that you understand who are your personas, who are your user segments, and work towards their goals. The second part, which was around satisfy customers. It's the way you communicate with users in a way that resonates specifically with their goals actually gain respect towards you, towards your brand, because that builds your brand identity and you know that why they are serving here, why they are here. And if they get satisfied, you will get your business. You will get into their shoes and understand that they are here for this desired outcome. And if you can give that, they are with you, no matter what. Even if there is a competitor, even if there are some good services available, but if you are one of the best, if you see the holistic picture and if you try to map their goals from end to end journey that they are doing and what they are doing in those journey, what is that one element that you can add to their value that gives them some value? So that becomes very effective and your time is also invested in a better way if you focus more on the second parameter which is satisfy customers because once you identify, you gain it and now is the time when you have to satisfy them because they're here and it hardly takes seconds to download an app and then delete it, right? How many of you actually do that? How many of you? download apps and then you don't find it helpful and I see one hand raised and all others are very much aligned with all the apps yeah that that's another factor because most of the people are using mobile sites they are 
user friendly and you stick it on them because there is a storage that you don't want to waste. But there are some apps I'm sure and I want to know those three top apps, top three apps that you cannot delete no matter what, even if your phone is stolen or if something gets hit, but you definitely need those two to three apps and I, I, I would definitely, Ola, Uber, okay? WhatsApp. Nobody from Google? <laughs> you don't use Google Maps? Google Photos, correct. Google Maps. Uh, anyone from this side? Because I hear so many answers from uh, the left side. YouTube, okay. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. So, as you guys only rightly answered my question, that you know, there are some apps that you cannot delete. You really feel connected with them. So, what keeps you engaged with them is something the mantra that I will disclose today that how you guys are sticking because these companies have worked on those philosophies and they are not allowing, allowing to get the chunking rate high for them rather their retention rate is high so how you can move from uh, not letting your churning rate rather you're gaining more users and retaining them so there's a formula for that that I have finally uh, managed and I could introduce because this is something satisfaction. So as we just discussed that you guys are satisfied with these apps and I want to know why but since we have lesser time because of all these logistic issues. Um, satisfaction is something that refers to the measurement that determines how happy customers are with the company's products, services, and capabilities. And I'm sure you guys agreed to that point that there are some satisfaction factors that are keeping you aligned and hooked with their uh, needs and what the goals are, and that's where you're not deleting it, right? So according to Michael Lebow, a satisfied customer is the best business strategy of all. Now how you will try to satisfy? The very first thing you do is you understand your users emotions, how they actually behave, you know, what they actually think and then connecting with their emotions because once their heart and soul is aligned with your product they're not going to go away and they're rather going to stick around with you for a longer period of time. So how they actually do that, um, I'll just show you some of the uh, emotions that people may have. Like, is this brand offering value for money? That, that's one of the emotions that they might be looking for. Is it worth investing in this or not? Is it worth paying them because uh, doing a transaction from their application is, is something that I want to check. I appreciate for being responsive. People really appreciate when you communicate on time with them. There is a response that you give them at the timely manner. They really like that. I can resonate with their language. Now something that we talk about understanding users' culture, their language, their aspirations, their interest. Now if you resonate with them and understand their geographical and um, interest, cultural interest, that is where they say that, you know, I'm resonating well with them. Do they have more choices? That's something people ask for. I just love this brand. How many of you actually feel for any of the brand? Be very honest. Do you feel? Because I just heard that you guys can't delete these two to three apps no matter what. Do you, do you also feel these kind of emotions that I just love this brand? Yeah, basically when, when your need is served, you feel like more connected and do I still need to call or write an email to the support? So there are some frustrations as well where you get frustrated and you don't want to get into something like where you actually have done connecting with the customer support, you have done a call and then you know there are 
shuffling here and there between the customer and the product. How many of you actually suffered this kind of a customer service where you connected, you bought something, and something went wrong, and they are not taking the ownership? Yeah? So we do see some bad experiences as well where you feel like that, oh, when did I take this decision to take product from them, right? So those kind of frustrations are also there. Moving on to the main part of the life cycle of the customer is retain customer. Now this is the most important and why I would say this is the most important part of the life cycle because you can gain customers to an extent through market campaigns, through newsletters, through updates, through some offers that you know some 10% discount or uh, not 10%, I would say 5 rupees or 10 rupees cash back, get some friends, right? So those kind of things do happen. But then they will not stick for a longer period of time. And there is a 80 to 20, 80 20 rule which says that 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of the regular customers. And I would emphasize more on this part because this is the game changer, right? Because this can make or break any business. You can gain, but then retaining is something which really not possible after a short period of time. And that's where you see, you hear so many stories around startups and across multiple domains where people try something, they build something, they get people, but then nothing works over and above because they don't invest in the retention part, which is the third life cycle phase. So what is retention? I just said, um, and formally what is uh, customer retention, which is the ability of a customer or product to retain its customers over specified period. So if there is some kind of a matrix that you evaluate it, like how much I gained in past one quarter, right? So that can evaluate that how much emphasis we have given for the retention part or have we even gained new users or not. So that's customer retention when they love to come back they can't think of any other option and they want to come back to you, right? I will highlight some of the benefits of royal, loyal customers. Increasing customer retention rates by 5% because this is the data points to support what I'm currently saying. Increasing customer retention rates by 5% increase profits by 25% to 95%. Can you see? It's a vast and huge number to chase for and just investing your energies your resources in retention rates you can do wonders a two percent increase in customer retention has the same effect decreasing cost by 10 percent and it's 10x worth as much on average loyal customers are worth up to 10 times as much as their first purchase so we definitely seek for our customers who actually do at least first purchase, but after that, they, you lose them. So if you have a loyal customer, it's 10x much worth than trying to acquire more users. And as per Swami Vivekananda, loyalty is rare, you find it, keep it. So loyalty is the best asset that you can seek for your, from your customers. And if you get it, keep it. You should value your loyal customers. It costs five times as much to attract a new customer than to keep an existing one. Now what does this mean? Why it actually costs five times as much to attract a new customer? Because there is skyrocketing cost that you see in retention rates and that's where it becomes even more important to invest in customer retention because this is more challenging. So you need to drive and concentrate more on the 
decisions that you take because some decisions may fail and you, you will regret later. Now how to control that because if you do a market analysis, if you do research with your users, you will gain some insights and that's where it's very important to gain real users insights and not just from your gut feeling that how I think this will work but on the ground it should work and that's where I have some more numbers to support this the probability to selling to an existing customer is 60 to 70 percent while the probability of selling to a new customer is 5 to 20 percent and as per Forbes report if there is one customer who is happy, who is satisfied, they'll tell to at least 10 more people and get that business for you because you are not doing any marketing, you are not doing any brand identity and building and investing in it. You satisfied someone and they are the ones who are promoting and that's where you see referral codes are there where people in applications give you those referral codes. Do you actually share those referral codes and bring your friends to those applications? How many of you actually do that? Sometimes. What about this side? Do you even do that? No, only this side is active. Why? Okay. So it depends. Maybe you are not satisfied with those applications and that's why you are not doing it, right? And the side, people might have good experience with the applications, they are using it, and that's where they are doing it. So, what I'm trying to say is that people who are satisfied will bring business to you. Now, the only game is that you need to bring those satisfied customers again and again and again. Because you need to thrive for that continuity. Because, you know, there are big brands who are already gained large number of users, right? There are billions of and millions of users across the world. But still, they are, they are not sitting. They are still thriving to maintain that because this is something which comes with time. And if you don't satisfy, you don't change with the market, you don't understand their needs, they keep on moving. So finding a loyal customer is very difficult, right? And we are loyal because we are at the receiving end. We are only loyal when we actually see the value. And when we get that value, we are fine. Even people get immunity towards pricing hikes, you know. There are products that I'm sure you must be using which are quite expensive if you uh, actually check their rates with the competitors. But then it depends that how many are using it and why they are using it. Because when you build that reputation, the brand identity, which talks about the same values, same feelings that people can resonate and their goals and outcomes are met, they can keep coming back. Right? Um, in the interest of time, I'll move uh, to the Next slide, which is 47% customer, percent customers who experience bad service, they change providers within 48 hours. You know, it doesn't take much time as we already discussed that we keep on deleting our applications if they does not serve purpose. Or in the interest of storage, we don't even download them. And if there is a bad experience, there is some product that you purchased and they have given a call center number but you are trying to call and nobody is picking. So that's a bad experience. So the interaction with the brand is not till the transaction. That is something that we need to understand. It is beyond those transaction screens. It is beyond those transaction interactions as well. So it starts before, which is we say pre and post conversion conversions rate, which means before the user actually landed, once he get converted into a user, from a user to a customer, and then someone who is renewing those purchases again and again, there are packages they are buying on a recurring basis, they're coming back. And suddenly if you see there is a bad response, they'll go back. They have competitors. So always seek this in mind that 
maybe you are the best, but there is a competition waiting for you at the door. So the moment you leave it and you don't show the value, they can leave. So now I want to jump on the framework. That was the mantra I was talking about that, OK, finally, <laughs> we could understand that, yes, we need users. Yes, we need from users to customers. We want to gain and retain them. But how? Can, I'm sure you must be having this question in your mind that, OK, Monica, now what? We know that we need it, but how can we get it? So the framework starts from connect. That's the one line, you know. We humans need connect. We are not robots. We are not machines. We are humans with a heart. We can only feel or get connected with any application or be loyal to the uh, be a loyal customer only when it starts with connect. It all starts with empathy. Personal touch. Now, how you actually do the connect? is personal touch, listen, and educate, and be responsible. So personal touch means that you need to be little personalized with them. So now, you and me, sorry, what's your name? OK, Tanisha and Monica may not be having the same aspirations or same goal to come on an application. And she might be doing it in a different way. She might be having a purchase weekly. I may be having it monthly. I may be watching a YouTube video of some other channel, and she must be liking, disliking, or maybe uh, unsubscribing some other channel. So the experience cannot be same. We have to personalize, understand their preferences, and get them what they are looking for. It cannot be a general experience. Listen. Now, just hearing what they are saying does not really help. You have to listen to them. And there is a thin line difference between listening and hearing is when you try to understand from user's perspective. You try to understand from how it feels. And that's where I said it all is connected. Once you start feeling for somebody, and this is something that you, know, you, you can see across your life. It is not only about the products. It's about how we behave, how we actually get engaged anywhere, even in our schools and universities as well. Once we see that people are listening, they have something to share. Educate all people who come on your applications or your services, or if it's a physical product that they are using, they might not be the expert users. And don't expect them to be expert. You are the expert. You are technical people. You are expert. You have built something. But don't expect their expertise at the same level. Try to educate them. Think you have never get into NASA's you know, rocket, right? You don't know how, how will it actually open. I don't know. At least I don't know how many of you have, have ever got a chance to visit, but I didn't. If I have to get in, I, I don't know. I don't know where that oxygen thing will come, where I have to get those dressing things. So just understand from, that's a high level picture, but what I'm trying to say is that understand from that perspective. If that's the situation we are in, we won't be able to understand, right? So educating them, giving them the context behind why, and that can be through tutorials, that can be through help, contextual ways and getting them connected. And the last four is the be responsible. Now, that's what we discussed already, that someone who is becoming your customer, it's your responsibility now to nourish that relationship. Now, there is a relationship between you and the new user. If you want that user to become your customer, then it's your responsibility to nourish the relationship. And that can only be done when you are responsible, when you show the empathy, when you show courtesy, when you show connection with them, and not leaving them that, hey, you have done the purchase, no matter what, keep calling. There, there are companies that if you don't like the product, if there is something wrong, they ask you to return back, right? 
And I'm sure many of you are doing that as well. So that's something the customer service. So be responsible towards them. It's your customer. You need to take the leverage. The second wheel is engage. Now, how can you engage with them? So if you show your users that you, know, you are in the top tiers, you are different from the peers, you're not the same. I'm not treating, sorry, your name? OK, I'm your? Sonali. So uh, if you show that Abhishek and Sonali, Abhishek who has been loyal to us from three years and Sonali who has just joined as a new user, may not have the same kind of discounts or the offers. And if you give them those kind of leverage where they feel that we are at the top tier, we are the privileged and valued customers, they'll come back. Basic expectations, when you meet and set your personas, just map those personas with the basic expectations. People come with basic expectations. The next part comes is when you delight them with the surprises, they didn't even expect it, right? So if they didn't expect, of course, they'll be happy. But if your basic expectation is not met, you'll not get into it. So if we take example of WhatsApp. If you switch on your WhatsApp and you try to figure out to send a message, and if that screen itself search is not working and you're not able to find the contact, how many of you will actually like to have those? No, right? So it basically depends from the basic expectations. Provide solutions, of course. We are already doing that. We are the experts, developers, designers, business architects who have mind to think over it. Deliver to promise, go beyond. Not just what you have done, but delight them. Show them some surprises. Measure, I'll be quick, because I need to give five minutes for the Q&A round as well. So measure, of course. Now, how do you measure your customer health? Which is like, are they with us? Are they loyal? Are they not? Because you don't want to be surprised after one year you have to do this measurement on a regular basis. There is Google's heart framework as well that you can use to evaluate from NPS score, like a net promoter score, and other surveys that you can do, ask questions from your users, how they are behaving, be it more open-ended questions so that they can speak more and not like yes or no kind of questions. Feedback, do value their feedback because that's very important. And don't see the negative feedbacks in a uh, demotivating way. Rather see the level of opportunities that lies beneath it. Referrals, I already spoke about it, that of course your referral works wonders because someone you trust, you know, and if that person refers something, I'm with this, right? Because you completely own that feeling with the person and you trust that person that okay my friend is suggesting I'm sure it, it looks good people say like this like you know one of my friend purchased and that's where I also did this because so people resonate well with the compelling stories with someone that looks like them appreciate which is the fourth and the last wheel appreciate who doesn't want to be feel special right Appreciate them. How do you actually do that? On their special occasions, on some auspicious occasions, you can give some exclusive offers, thank you note. Even just a thank you note works because people start connecting, right? Which is the thumb rule. Loyalty programs, you must have seen this. And then giving some gifts on occasions. And that's all from my side. This is the four wheel mantra that I wanted to share and I hope that this is helpful. Please use it to see the gaps where your product or your service is not working and then invest time in your users where you can see the opportunities. Thank you all, thank you so much.